so the cat's out of the bag, or something like that. But Persona 5 The Phantom X has officially launched in Korea and Taiwan. In China, it's an open beta, but I think that's a legality thing. So let's talk. Is Persona 5X actually bad? <laughs> Listen, I get it. China is very good, or bad. They're notorious for making bootleg products of popular properties. There are so many hilariously bad products that are blatant ripoffs of popular IPs and characters with amusingly translated names. But I'd like to say, this game is officially supervised by Atlas and Sega. There are a lot of designs that look similar, but just because one and two things are similar or take inspiration doesn't mean it's all awful. You're free to have your opinions as you want, but I do think design-wise, there's a lot to love and enjoy here if you're willing to be a little more open-minded. That said, I don't have anything against you if you do genuinely dislike the designs. Some of them are not my cup of tea either. However, if you're gonna say that this game is stealing assets from Persona 5, that is genuinely inaccurate, because they are officially allowed to use those things. It's not a bootleg ripoff, it is a genuine game that is licensed by Sega and Atlas. So if you're gonna use your words, use them correctly. That's all I'm saying. Joker from Persona 5. One thing that has been masterfully done in all Persona 5 spin-offs is the UI design. P5X had to nail this no matter what. I mean, to be a Persona 5 gotcha game, you gotta nail that feeling of Persona 5. And I feel like it does almost masterfully. For the most part, the UI elements are on par with Persona 5, but also share an element of mobile gaminess, akin to Genshin and Star Rail's UI design. Now, I am of the opinion that if something worked in one game, utilizing similar or even replicating the same designs or systems is not a bad thing. So from UI to combat, the same kind of snappy feeling does exist. It's not entirely one-to-one, -one, and assuming you're going to get the full Persona 5 experience from this game as opposed to just playing P5 is, in my opinion, not going to happen. Leader? Like, the captain of a pirate ship? So much like any other gacha, every single playable character has their own unique systems and kits to work with. Wonder is a set party member and will be in your party no matter what, so the game compensates for this by retaining his ability to use multiple personas but it also does hold you back a bit by only allowing him to have three at a time. The main concern I had originally was whether there were going to be 20 main characters in the plot, and that doesn't seem to be the case. A majority of the current gacha characters are simply just confidants with kind of a what-if scenario. So what if they were Phantom Thieves? And I think that's a neat idea, and I hope as time moves on, Black Wings and Atlas give us more of these as I would very much like to see some of the confidants from P5 with their own what-if style designs. But we'll see how long this game lasts. Obviously, it's a gotcha, so there's gonna be the element of live service, which ultimately means that if it doesn't make enough money, the game is prone to shut down. Regardless of that, I'm pretty impressed with how the combat system is handled. While it may be a little bit overwhelming to understand how each character functions, since they are no longer just specific to an element and a small role, once you understand, it's not hard to start using your teams efficiently. Composition generally does make a difference though, so even if you wanted to use Joker, Ryuji, An, and Morgana on one team, chances are the game will push back and you'll probably not get very far without dumping some cash into that kind of team comp. And I want to touch a little bit more on the combat, so... Take him down, Joker! <laughs> The game doesn't fully embrace the same combat system. The core of the last two modern Persona games included the Shift or Baton Pass system. While that does exist here, each character is designed to auto-follow up when they have a pass. Basically, they select their target based on weakness, and the attack they do is set and simply called a one more. If there is no weakness for them to target, they'll attack the same enemy as a previous character. And while that may seem like a downgrade, which it is. It does lend itself to create more difficult battles, since you can't just blast enemies over and over with a baton pass. I feel like in some sense, since SP management is not as important as it restores after each battle, the gameplay is definitely not exactly the same. The system encourages you to understand how characters synergize, and building teams requires thought 
and effective planning for battles ahead. The combat at its core is not the same as P5, though it does retain a majority of the same elements. There are even some things I believe this game does better than P5 in regards to combat. For example, instead of always allowing tougher enemies to be downed instantly with one weakness hit, the game provides them shields so that you have to hit their weakness multiple times before they actually get down. It's an interesting and pretty efficient way to keep the weakness break system in tough fights. And I think some games should take notes from that, since it's the core of their gameplay. Otherwise, I couldn't totally understand this because it doesn't seem like it's fully translated, but there are ways to get status effects on enemies without actually giving them the full status effect. As an example, Closer is a electric type damage dealer, and she can deal shock without actually making the enemy shocked. And that is one of her core mechanics to following up with stronger moves. Did you think I was going to mug you? The simplest explanation I can provide here is, have you played Honkai Star Rail or even Genshin Impact? Then this game basically does that. The primary difference is that stamina is restored on a five minute timer instead of six or seven. So you're gonna be filling up pretty fast in that regard. But you'll feel very at home if you've played either of the two games, to the point where I could say that if you are waiting for an official global release, getting acquainted with the gacha stuff in Star Rail will make this experience much less daunting. I mean, the rolling system is a bit more generous in terms of function, so instead of a 90 pity, there's an 80 pity, and the weapon banner is also cheaper than the character banner. It has all the same landmarks as Star Rail. Honestly, if you've played Star Rail at least for a month or two, a lot of these things will look very familiar. The generosity on currency, however, does remain to be seen. One thing that can't really be compared as a one-to-one -one is how much currency is given out in every gacha game. Because every gacha game has their own different level of how much currency is good and bad, and what you need it for and what you don't need it for. But generally, it's difficult, if not impossible, to judge a gacha on generosity without letting it sit for about six months. At least from my experience. The early days and months are usually full of content to drive up the player base and keep people invested, which means currency rates are a little bit skewed. So I'll have to see about that down the line. But regardless for me, if you're playing a gacha just to pull units, then you may be bound to make bad decisions, and I recommend restricting yourself from getting hasty with stuff like that, unless you've got the money to spend. But I'm not here to police you, it's just my opinion. I've been playing the game mostly with the free characters I've been given, and everything has been doable. You might have to strategize a little bit differently, and you're probably going to want to use more personas than I've been using on Wonder. But for the most part, yeah, the game, the game's fine. You don't need to roll anyone, really. So yeah, long story short, gacha elements are not that bad. And if you want to get a fair understanding of them before this game comes to global, and you don't want to play this game while it's not in whatever language you may want to play it in. This game basically copies the two biggest gotchas on the market, so look no further than those two to give yourself a little bit of an understanding of the systems. I also have not reached the gearing system yet, as that doesn't unlock until level 35, and unfortunately I do not have all the time in the world to just play video games. None of these people know that I was an undesirable child. So the core of Persona is the narrative, right? P5X does do what I was afraid of, and kind of has a template set up that follow pieces of Persona 5's main plot. It's not exactly a one-to-one, -one. in fact, I do think there are plenty of unique elements, but I just finished Arc 1, and if you're thinking about it, then you will notice parallels to P5. While I do understand that this is a spin-off, I do wish they got a bit more unique about the story. What remains to be seen is how the other arcs will play out. Right now, Arc 2 seems to be a lot less similar to Arc 2 of P5, but I'll need to see how exactly they go about it in my next few weeks of playing this game. But I think the main cast so far is likable. The Owl is kind of like Morgana without the crush element, which is good for me, I guess. It's not something that I feel like is always great for his character, but whatever. Motoha shares some similarities with Ryuji, but she's her own character too. I get the comparisons, and it's very likely she's probably based off the Chariot Arcana. I don't really know the whole Arcana system, to be honest. But I also feel like it's not really wise for me to talk too much about character writing with a machine translating their lines. 
While you can understand nuances of the characters through voice acting and through translations, it feels like most of the time I understand the meaning, but not always the intent. Even machine translations require interpretation, and I may not always get that right. My point is, is that while I have a good grasp on what is happening, I'm not in a place where fully grading the story is currently reasonable. There are definitely nuances that I will miss, and characterization pieces that I will also miss due to the fact that a machine is directly translating these lines, and I'm having no hand in it. If or when this game comes to global, which I think it very much will in the future, I will grade the story once that comes around. Alright, I get it! Alright, this is where you're gonna hear my biggest gripe with the main story. It seems like Blackwing Studio loves this track. It is used whenever they want, and it tends to be unfitting. Let's let's do an example. Let's say this was Persona 5, right? So that scene where the Shiho scene. Yeah, now imagine if right after when Ryuji confronts Mishima, the game plays this track. Here, I'll demo it for you. Ah, that hurts. Why'd you run like that, huh? I didn't run. She jumped and tried to kill herself. <laughs> Leave me alone. He's right. We ain't trying to get you busted. We won't say you talked either. Susui. She was called out by Mr. Kamashita. Wait, what? I was called by him a number of times too. To the teacher's room. It wasn't just me or Suzui either. He'd nominate someone when he was in a bad mood and hit them. This game basically does that. For some reason, Wicked Plan, a song intended to be used for silly, dumb, and funny moments in P5, is being used as a standard hangout song. It feels like the team managing the music and OSTs just cannot be bothered or isn't bothering to insert the right songs into the right scenes, and instead has the files arranged so that a lot of scenes just kind of have random music playing for the sake of playing random music. But it's so distracting because the number of times you are going to hear Wicked Plan is ridiculous. While Persona isn't exactly a stranger to tonal whiplash, the number of times this song has been used in my own playthrough, again, has become incredibly distracting. P5 has over a hundred tracks. Surely there must be more to it than just Wicked Plan. I usually play through Persona games twice, once with BGM and once without it. And of course, the BGM has enhanced every single Persona game, but I genuinely think that if I turned off the BGM outside of combat for this game, it would actually enhance my experience, which is insane. You're... you've... what is this? Now, I've yet to say a lot of negatives about the game. I mean, the Wicked Plan thing is probably my biggest negative. The only major one I can truly think of is that there are some optimization and graphics configuration issues. I either have to choose to cap the frame rate to reduce the load on my GPU, or I uncap it and it keeps VSync on. I don't know why I can't have both on. I know some people don't like VSync, but without VSync my screens always tear and I don't know how else to fix that. So it's kind of frustrating that my choices are uncap the frame rate and let your GPU rest a little bit, or cap the frame rate and witness the screen tear into a million pieces. The game also freezes a fair amount, which I'm sure is thanks to the load on my GPU. Well, I'm not, I'm not actually sure, I'm not that technical, but I assume that having a high load on the GPU does cause some issues. Anyways, this game's got some problems to iron out. The other problems, I imagine, are due to latency of playing on a Korean server, which is very far from where I am. And that means load times between battles could be affected, and interacting with certain objects might be delayed. And then I will pin down the sound design a little bit. Some sounds are notably missing, like canceling your highlight selection, while others are just kind of weird. When you attack in the metaverse, for some reason, one of Wonder's stabs uses the same sound as the UI knife pin. This one. It's distracting. And I'm not against the reuse of sound effects. I genuinely think that reusing sound effects, 
even between games or between series is a smart thing to do. I mean, if it works, why not? However, especially since this game doesn't always reuse P5 sound effects the same way, and it doesn't reuse all of P5 sound effects, which results in some lackluster feeling attacks, it's kind of weird that they chose to use this sound for this move. But generally, that's where I'm the most well. The sound design feels like it's lacking a little bit, and I wouldn't be bothered by that, but for some reason, these are sticking out like a sore thumb, and I genuinely hope that things improve over the next few months. Well, in that case... But right now, Persona 5 The Phantom X is the closest you are going to get to another turn-based Persona JRPG spinoff for the time being. It's not perfect, and the story isn't finished, but I do think it gives us a chance to dive into a game that feels similar. There were some pretty fresh takes on this battle system, with their own sense of challenge due to this being a gacha in early release state. I'm curious to see how things will pan out in the coming months, and I'll be revisiting this topic down the line, perhaps fairly often, depending on how I feel. So if you want to see that, you can leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel. I would also appreciate if you let me know your thoughts on P5X in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Alright, he is done. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> let her rip. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Is it the jonkler? Watch.